Hi, I'm Ed Karn from Sound Wellness. Now, Sharon and I have traveled across North America, exhibiting at trade fairs, hosting our own events, and one thing that we always get asked is, how do I play a Tibetan bowl? Well, playing a Tibetan singing bowl is really quite easy, but there are a few things that you have to know if you want your bowl to play really well for you. The first is how to hold your bowl. Now, you want to hold it in your non-working hand. So if you're right-handed, you're going to hold it in your, your left hand. If you're left-handed, you want to hold it in your right. You need to hold your hand fairly flat. You see, it's the walls of the bowl that vibrate that create the sound. And if you allow your fingers to come up on the, the walls of the bowl, it'll stop playing for you. Now, I want to show you just how much a bowl vibrates with this big old Tibetan bowl here. Now, we don't know just exactly how old this one is, but we do know it's at least several generations old. So let me give it a tap for you, and I'm going to show it in this other camera so that you can see the vibrations of the walls of the bowl. So you see how much the walls of the bowl vibrating? That's where your sound is coming from. And so if you're playing your bowl, and you allow your fingers to come up on the side, it's going to stop playing for you right away. If you keep your fingers on the side while you try to start the ball playing, it's not going to play for you. Now, the other thing I want to mention about holding a bowl is if you wear a ring, like a wedding ring or any other rings, if you can take them off when you're playing the bowl, that's great. If you can't, then that's fine too, but just make sure you cup your hand just a little bit so that the ring doesn't come in contact with the bottom of the bowl. If you do, it'll chatter. Now the second thing I want to talk about when you're playing the bowl is choosing the, the playing stick that you're going to use. And this is one case where size really does matter. Now this stick here is sized just about right for this bowl and it gets it to sing right off. But if I use the wrong size stick, and I'm going to grab this big old Tibetan again. And if I use a very small stick and try to play it, I'm not going to be able to get this bowl singing. There just isn't enough mass in this small stick in order to get this big old bowl playing. But if I use a better size stick, one that's sized for this bowl, then you see it plays just about right away. Now this also works uh, the same way with a small bowl. If you try to play with too large of a stick to, to make it play, you might be able to get it to play, but it's pretty unwieldy to, to get it singing. But if you choose a better size stick like this one in order to get it to play, then it'll sing beautifully for you. The, the next thing that I want to talk to you about is how to play your bowl and how to hold the stick. Now again, make sure you keep your hand fairly flat. I tend to hold my stick kind of like I, I hold a pencil. For a small bowl this size, I'm going to keep my elbow and my forearm fairly steady and I'm going to just run around the rim of the bowl keeping the stick at about a 45 degree angle as I go around the bowl. Now, if you try to play on the inside of the bowl, it won't play. We get asked that all the time, and it just won't work. You have to have the stick on the outside of the bowl when you're playing it. Now, some sticks also have leather on them, so that they're a wood leather stick. Uh, the leather plays really well with these old, what we call master bowls. These are the ones that were, were made in the monasteries, usually generations ago. And, and they sound beautifully. With, with the leather part of the stick. A modern machine-made bowl, though, often won't play well with, with the leather part. You need to play them with the wooden part of the stick. Now, sometimes when you're playing, and I, I hear this a lot when people are playing, the bowl gets so energetic that it chatters like that. Well, what's going on? is the walls of the bowl are vibrating so much that it's actually pushing the stick off of the walls of the bowl and that's what's causing the chatter. 
And so the solution for that is really quite simple. When it starts to chatter, slow right down and press harder. And you'll still get a beautiful sound out of your bowl and the chatter will stop. Now there is another way to play the bowl and this is Sharon's favorite way to play a bowl and that's with a mallet. Now this mallet is compressed felt and when you tap the bowl with a mallet and give it a good tap the sound of the bowl and the vibrations just fill you from head to toe. It, it's really an exquisite way to play your bowl. And, and so that's another option for you as you're playing the bowl. Now, one thing that's taken me a long time to get my head around is that when you're playing a bowl, that bowl is a combination of the bowl and your energy in the minute. And when you're playing it, it's a combination of the two. And as you go through your day, of course, your energy changes through the day as, as you go through the day's events and the sound of the bowl will change for you. Now, the last thing that I, I want to tell you about bowls is they love to be played. Don't leave them on the shelf. Bring them out. Play them often. The frequencies of the bowl just develop so much more. The bowl sounds richer the more you play it. So enjoy your bowl. Play it often. And I wish you health and harmony.